This is a Tinder-like archive paper finding app. You can just simply scroll, uh, the, swipe the pa uh, papers that are found to lift if you don't like them or to write. And they will appear here. You can see their detail and view their PDF. These are saved uh, in local storage. So if you were to refresh, they still remain. You can search for reasoning in agents, for example, fetch new papers. And it won't fetch the papers that you've already looked at because uh, the, actually, if you go to your application, they are stored in local storage. As you can see, like papers and view papers. But if you were to reset your data, then those disappear and you can start from scratch. Let's search for reasoning in agents. If you like this, swipe it to the right. You can also use these buttons. And this way you can just accumulate the papers you would like to explore. So it works very simply. Uh, like I said, you can reset the data. If you don't reset it, next time you load it, this will, these will appear so you can actually accumulate. It's a pretty simple app. It's a fast API app. I will review the um, main.py, which is pretty simple. And I will let my AI code explainer explain the index J uh, JavaScript and the CSS because it's quite long. You can actually download this from my Patreon. Link will be in the description and in the comment. Uh, when you become a patron, you also get access to 300 uh, plus other projects. So let's take a look at main.py. Uh, we have all of our imports up there. We define our app as the fast API app. Let me put bring this down. We mount the static files. Static files include the HTML, JavaScript, and the CSS. And we initialize our core's middleware. This is to tell the browser from which origins it should actually display this uh, website from. When you actually deploy this, allowed origins would include, for example, your URL. Then we define a, a main route, the main page route, the slash, which is just going to serve the index.html. So that will be our main page. And then uh, we have another route, which is API slash papers, which is going to take in a query, which is the query that we are entering on this page, such as the search term. And it is pretty much going to search archive and return 100 results uh, sorted by submitted date. You can change this if you like. You can also add it as an option to the front end page. And now we initialize the papers list and we append all the papers along with their uh, necessary information and we return that as a JSON object and rest of the processing is done in JavaScript to display these and all the uh, swiping and the button clicking is handled there. And we run this, this main.py can run it directly at the host uh, 127 at port. Uh, you can choose your port, but port 8000 with reload true. So when you set reload to true, uh, if you change anything about this main.py, then your server will restart. So this is about it. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, you can download this from my Patreon. And also, if you're enjoying my projects, you can visit my website, echoive.live, and find all my videos. Uh, watch them there as well for free. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links conveniently underneath each one of the projects. Okay, so next up, my AI code explainer will explain the code for the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I hope you'll enjoy it. The code for AI code explainer is also available at my Patreon. If you like what it does, you can find it in the description in the comment. Thank you. This HTML snippet is the structural foundation of a web application intended for discovering ArcSieve papers. It sets up the basic layout with a sidebar for displaying liked papers and a main content area for searching and displaying paper cards. A modal is provided for showing detailed information when a paper is selected. The document includes links to styles and font awesome for icons, bringing in a bit of visual flair and functionality, like search icons and buttons for interacting with listed papers like dislike reset. It also contains a link to a JavaScript file which will control the dynamic behavior of this page. Overall, this section is crucial as it sets the user interface where all interactions with the application will take place, making it the face of the paper discovery tool. 
think of it as the canvas that will eventually become the more interactive and lively gallery, thanks to our JavaScript partner, InCrime. This JavaScript snippet initializes several important variables that maintain the state of paper browsing, such as current papers, current index, and records for viewed and liked papers using local storage. It also sets up the event listeners that will make the application interactive once the document is ready. These listeners help handle actions like searching for papers, liking or disliking them, and resetting data. They also allow closing of the paper details modal. Without these event listeners, your page would be pretty much a static piece of art, but we need Picasso-level functionality here. So this code snippet is pivotal for coordinating user interactions with the fancy HTML structure we've set up and ensuring everything is nicely synchronized. This code encompasses the logic for handling searches and fetching papers. When the user enters a search query, handle search is triggered, which prepares the application to fetch results by resetting indexes and states, and then calls fetch papers. This function makes an asynchronous call to an API to retrieve paper data based on the search query. If there are papers available, they are added to current papers and displayed. It also handles errors in the fetching process by logging them and updating the user interface with a friendly message. Nobody wants random errors to pop up more often than cats in a Zoom meeting. In short, this segment is crucial for the core functionality. Without it, our ArcSiv paper discovery app would just sit quietly and stare back at you, silently demanding coffee. Here we have the functionality that displays the current paper and manages swipe-based interactions. The display current paper function pulls a paper from current papers and updates the interface with its details. This is like putting a shiny new book on a stand for everyone to admire. Swipe events are set up through add swipe events to make navigation intuitive and modern. Using mouse or touch, users can drag the card, triggering the corresponding swipe effects in start dragging, though we resist literally yelling we as we hope the user swipes to the next paper. These swipes will then trigger further interactions, encouraging dynamic browsing and mimicking familiar UI patterns from famous dating apps. But for academic soulmates, naturally. The drag, stop dragging, and handle action functions come together to control the swiping gestures and apply the appropriate actions based on their direction. Drag calculates the card's position, applying rotations and scales for a smooth UI experience. If you ever dreamed of making your virtual papers do a little dance, here they go. Stop dragging checks if the swipe distance exceeded a threshold to determine if a swipe is a like or dislike. Cards will stylishly disappear off screen depending on the decision, updating the local storage to keep track of paper preferences. Handle action handles the logic based on the action, like or dislike, updating the local storage and user interface with new paper data. This segment lets users interact with the papers dynamically. We ensure your academic exploration stays as smooth as butter on a hot pan and as engaging as the latest cat video on the internet. This snippet is all about managing the liked papers and modal interactions. Update liked papers list. Updates the sidebar with a list of papers users have liked, giving them something to reference back to, like that time you made a list and instantly felt more organized. Show paper details. When a liked paper is clicked, this function displays more detailed information in a modal, similar to opening a chapter in an encyclopedia. Reset data allows users to clear all stored data, akin to that satisfying feeling of hitting the reset button after confirming, because of course we'd hate it if you accidentally wiped your paper loves. This segment adds depth to the interface, providing utility for users to manage and access their liked paper nirvana, and making sure our users can clean up when academic life gets a tad cluttered. Welcome to the land of vanilla CSS, where style rules the realm, the code snippet sets foundational styles for the application. By defining CSS variables for colors and utilizing a flexible layout provided by Flexbox on containers, this ensures your app looks sleek and fabulous across different devices. It kicks off with a globally consistent style via a reset because inconsistency is so last year, and applies a captivating gradient to the body. 
The thoughtful use of fonts and meticulously managed margins padding ensures that the user experience is smooth and aesthetically pleasing, acting as the invisible art that makes the interface feel professional and accessible. Think of it as digital feng shui. In this CSS segment, the visual aesthetics of the sidebar and main content area are defined. The sidebar is styled to be sticky, hanging onto the view like a clumsy squirrel clinging to a branch, ensuring options to reset or check liked papers are always at hand. With subtle transparency and a neat blur effect, it exudes a modern and polished look while ensuring that the sidebar content is easily scannable. Meanwhile, the main content section flexibly centers itself, notably for any possible device size shenanigans, ensuring the search container remains visible and user-friendly. Overall, these styles provide a cohesive user experience, gracefully accommodating both browsing and data review with class and convenience. Here we have the styling for our search bar, an integral part of the user interface. The input field for search queries is given a cozy style with sufficient padding, rounded edges, and transparency, making it not only a space for interaction, but also a visually appealing element. When focused, it softly highlights with an accent primary color to guide the user's eyes like a friendly lighthouse beacon during a stormy search. These styling considerations significantly enhance user experience by providing immediate feedback when interacting with the search bar, making users feel these hashtag CSS goals are quite achievable. This section takes care of styling the paper cards, which are the heart of the application. Each card is designed with a stylish, semi-transparent background and a smooth border to give it a modern and accessible interface. The blur effect behind the card contents provides a layering effect that is visually appealing and keeps the focus on the content. The use of a rounded corner, along with box shadow, delivers a floating appearance, which adds depth. The use of transitions ensures fluid animations, providing users with a rich gesture interactive experience. In essence, these styling tweaks make your academic treasure hunting feel as luxurious as opening up a crisp leather-bound book in a stately library. Here, we have the style rules that make the action buttons stand out. These circular buttons, a colorful gradient shout out, command attention, and invite action through their blissfully familiar design, not unlike the interface of a popular dating app. Whether liking or disliking a paper, these actions are signified through distinct colors, ensuring intuitive understanding. Action buttons further animate when hovered upon, making the interaction feel more reactive and enjoyable, keeping users engaged. It's the kind of tactical feedback that assures you that yes, you have indeed just liked something potentially groundbreaking. In this part, we delve into the styling for the modal, a secondary window used for showing paper details when a liked paper is selected. The modal is initially hidden, display none, appearing with a semi-transparent dark background that pushes the modal content to the foreground, not unlike a well-lit stage. Inside, the modal content is cushioned with ample padding and rounded corners, making it primed for delivering academic highlights. The close button, ever ready in its corner, offers a quick escape path with a soft hover effect, ensuring users can dismiss the modal with elegance and ease. This design ensures additional information is accessed without overwhelming the user, creating a satisfying flow of information accessibility. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one on one. Check those out as well. I've now listened to me. I've been trying to code, and you know, like I'd like coding. The fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I'd heard about it. It's easy. So um, I came across 1000x cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just it just worked. I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, Thousand X, your coding.